Can I ask you to join me as we trust God together for what God has intended to do with our lives? Can you join me as we move together on the train of faith towards the destination that God has for each and every one of us? And I want to say this very quickly. Whatever you have heard in the last 17 days, please let it mix with faith in your heart. Because it's not just the being a hearer of the word. It is in the doing and the doing is in you mixing the word with faith in your heart so that as you have heard, you are not just a hearer, you are a doer. You are propelling yourself in the direction that the word is taking you. And I pray for each and every one of us today that the direction the word of God is launching us into will become the experience of our lives in the name of Jesus. Before we go ahead, can I just ask you to make a declaration of faith with me father in the name of jesus lord i believe your word is true i believe your promises are yea and amen in christ jesus i bring myself in alignment with your will i bring myself in alignment with your counsel and your plan for my life lord i ask not my will but yours be done lord i declare not my will but yours be done lord i choose to arise and shine for my light has come for your glory is risen upon me though darkness may cover the earth and gross darkness to people the light of the Lord shines upon me and his glory is seen upon my life Gentiles come to my light and kings to the brightness of my rising in the name of Jesus from today and forever I enjoy the favor of God I enjoy the light of God. The Bible says it's the light that shines in darkness and darkness cannot comprehend. I enjoy the light of God and the favor of God all the days of my life in the name of Jesus. In Jesus mighty name we have prayed. If you have prayed that prayer of faith and you have made that declaration together with us tonight then I want you to get ready. I want you to get set. I want you to get yourself prepared for that which God is working out in your life. And today I just want to, before we pray, we are going to pray today. And before we do that, I want to share with us on a title, whose report will you believe? Whose report will you believe? And I want us to join me to Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16 and we're going to read a few verses there and we're going to move to chapter 19 and also touch on some few verses there. Genesis chapter 16. Now Sarai Abram's wife had bore him no children and she had an Egyptian maidservant whose name was Agar. So Sarai said to Abram, see now. The Lord has restrained me from bearing children. Please go in to my maid. Perhaps I shall obtain children by her. And Abraham heeded the voice of Sarah. Then Sarah, Abraham's wife, took Agar, a maid, the Egyptian, and gave her to her husband, Abraham, to be his wife. After Abraham had dwelt 10 years in the land of Canaan, so he went into Agar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress became despised in her eyes. Then Sarai said to Abram, my wrong be upon you. I gave my maid into your embrace. And when she saw that she had conceived, I became despised in her eyes. The Lord judged between you and me. So if we go on and on, we'll see what happened between Abraham, Sarai, and Agar. I want us to fast forward to Genesis chapter 17 and verse 1. When Abraham was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am almighty God, walk before me and be blameless. I will make my covenant between me and you and multiply you exceedingly. Then Abraham fell on his face 
And God talked with him saying, as for me, behold, my covenant is with you and you shall be a father of many nations. Remember, this was after Agar had given birth, had bore him a son, had born Abraham a son, that is Ishmael. That time, the Bible says Abraham was 86 years old in Genesis chapter 16, verse 16. Abraham was 86 years old when Agar bore him Ishmael. And this was fast forward to 99. So if we, if we do our, our mathematics, add and subtract 99 minus 80, 86, that, that will give us about um, 13 years. So this was 13 years down the line. Ishmael was 13 years old. So Abraham was in, in, our, in our judgment from what we have read, Abraham was already a father. But this was 99 years old. This was 13 years after Ishmael. God appeared to Abraham and said, I am almighty God. Walk before me and be blameless. So Abraham had been walking with God, but God still had something against him. He said, walk before me and be blameless. So either though you've not been. And he said, I will make a covenant with you. We're going into another season. The, the new time has come upon your life. Well, I'm taking you into a new season. And he said, see what I'm going to do. And I will multiply you exceedingly. Then Abraham fell upon his face and he said to him, that you will, you shall be a father of many nations. Either to say, God will not say to, to a man what the man is already walking in. When God is speaking to you about a matter, it is because one, you are not yet walking in the realization of it, or two, you have not even come into the consciousness of it. So Abraham did not know that it was not just going to be a father of one boy. God was showing him a dimension of his life. That's what the Bible says that things that eyes have not seen, things that ears have not heard, things that have not yet entered into the heart of men are the things that God has reserved for those who love him. So the lovers of God are the men and the women that qualify for things that eyes have not seen. So how do a 99 year old man come into an experience of becoming a father of nations who just 13 years ago for the first time in his life got a son? So are, are we seeing how God is dealing with Abraham? Because what I said to one, I said to all, God said, God is also speaking to you. He's speaking to you right now. Are you single? And it looks as though you are past your age, the age of, you know, the society as a mark for getting married. Are you married and you think you have gone past the age of childbearing or your fruitful years or you're about to step into menopause? See, God is saying something to you that in the world standard, in the highs of society, in the highs of the world, there are certain things that might have gone past time, but not with God. In the covenant of God, it's not so. So God is saying to Abraham at 99 years old that I am going to make you a father of many nations. And he didn't stop there. Verse 5. No longer shall your name be called Abraham, but your name shall be called Abraham. For I will make, I have made you Seek what God's saying. You know, I mentioned that if God is speaking to you, when God is uh, talking to a man and is declaring something, it's two things. Is it that you've not come into the consciousness of the season or the time that has come upon you by the reason of divine alignment or that you have not yet walked into the experience that God is leading you into? So God is saying to Abraham, he said, you are going to, you are about to step into a new dimension in your life. 
You are about to step into a new season and I'm announcing to somebody today that you are about to step into a new season of your life. You are about to step into a new dimension in your life that you will start experiencing things that eyes have not seen. That you will start experiencing things that ears have not heard. You will start experiencing things that have not yet entered into the heart of men that God has reserved for you. So see what God has reserved for Abraham. He said, no longer will you be called Abraham, but you shall be called Abraham. For I have made you a father of many nations. He said, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. He said, the first time he said to him, I will exceedingly multiply you. He said, I will make you exceedingly fruitful. So God is saying, I'm turning things around. You that could not father one child, you that could not have one child, I am going to make you exceedingly fruitful. It's not going to be about a multiplier effect. It's going to be a geometric kind of effect. He said, I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. So God is saying you will come from, it's more like you're coming from behind. You are coming from, oh, help me, Holy Spirit. You are coming from nothing. You are coming right to the top. You are coming from lack to having abundance of all things. You are coming from somebody that did not even have one person to say I to. And you are becoming the one that becomes the wife of the most prestigious man. You are coming from a, a man that, that has been forsaken. You are becoming to become the husband of a virtuous woman. So God is saying, I will make nations of you and kings shall come from you. Verse 7, I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendant after you in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your descendant after you. Also, I give to you and your descendant after you the land in which you are a stranger. All the land, not some of it, all the land of Canaan as an everlasting possession and I will be their God. See how God was cutting, how God is cutting a transgenerational covenant with Abraham. And he said to Abraham, his name changed. The Bible says, those that wait upon the Lord, the Lord will renew their strength. They will mount up with wings as eagles. They will run and not be weary. They will walk and not faint. See, there's a dimension that God is bringing you into as you are trusting God. That's why I said, come on this train of faith with me tonight because the Lord is about to change. The Lord is overturning and overturning and overturning situations in your favor. The Lord is causing all grace to abide bound unto you so that in all things you have in sufficiency you have sufficiency concerning your marital destiny you have sufficiency concerning your, 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 your children the fruit of the womb you have sufficiency concerning the lack in your marriage you have sufficiency of all things that's the season the Lord is bringing upon you and, the, and verse 9 Bible says and God said to Abraham and God is saying to you, as for you, as for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your descendants after you, throughout your generations. This is my covenant which you shall keep between me, you and your descendants after you. Every male child according among you shall be circumcised and you shall be circumcised in the flesh of your foreskins and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and you. He who is eight days old among you shall be circumcised. Every male child in your generations. He who is born in your house or bought with your money. And God kept talking to him. And he went to verse 15. Let's quickly go there. Then God said to Abraham. Are you listening? As for Sarah, your wife. Not Agar. As for Sarah, your wife. 
you shall call a name Sarah. You shall not call a name Sarah, but Sarah shall be a name. And I will bless her and also give you a son by her. Then I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. I will make you a mother of nations, God said to Sarah. And to Abraham, I will make you a father of nations. So God was making a covenant with this couple. This were the same couple that they had for years been barren. For years been in the same situation. When he looked as if everything around them was not working. And it just happened that God visited them at the nick of time. Abraham was 99. Sarah was 90. And see what God was saying. A child will be born by her, a son by her. He said, I will bless her. Kings of people shall be from her. And I'm asking you today, whose report will you believe? God as is in the business of doing the impossible. God is in the business of, of doing what, what is unfathomable. How can a woman of 90 and a man of 99 be promised a son in their old age? Be promised nations? Be promised kings out of their loins? How will these things be? And that is where I want you to believe God. That's why when we started, say, said, let these words be mixed with faith in your heart. See, you cannot, it's not by the seeing of the eyes or the hearing of the ears. You must be able to see beyond the natural and hear beyond the natural to step into and to connect to what God is doing in this season. The things that eyes have not seen, truly eyes have not seen them. The things that hears have not heard, truly hears have not heard them. I'm declaring concerning you, your testimony, the order of testimony that God will be bringing your way are the things that eyes have not truly seen, that hears have not truly heard, that has not yet entered into the hearts of men. It is unfathomable and that is what God specializes in. Are you going to partner with him and trust him for the next level of your life? Are you single? And you are trusting God to be married. There is a covenant of, of God in Christ Jesus that you can tap into. Do you believe God? The Bible says in the beginning was the word. John chapter 1 verse 1. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same God word in the beginning is the same word that gave life to you. It's the same word that brought you on the scene on the face of the earth. And that same word can take you farther than where you are. Do you believe? Whose report will you believe? Sarah at, at that point was so carried away. I'm getting old. Her body started speaking to her. Her environment started speaking to her. Family and friends started speaking to her. And she said, you know what? Let me just help this man. Let, at least let, me ha let him have a son. Let me, let's see if, we can, if I can have a son through Agar. Our resolve from Egypt is Agar. Can, can we do something with what we got from Egypt? And Sarah gave Agar. That was a fundamental error. And there are many people that have gone down that road, that negative road, that wrong road. There are choices you don't make. The choices you make outside God will always come back to haunt you. No matter how long it is, wait patiently of the Lord. I say again, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and the Lord will strengthen your heart. The only results that will not haunt you are those that you get in God. Whose report will you believe? And God of a second chance visited Sarah again. He said, I will give you a son. And if we go back, and we'll see, God, you know, at some point, Abraham also was, was co confused. I want us to see it together. Verse 17 of that chapter 17. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to in his heart, Shall a child be born to a man who is on 100 years old? 
And shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, be a child? Are you in that situation? Can I marry successfully at 40? At 37, can I still find a man that is faithful? At 50, can I still find a woman that will love me genuinely and serve God and be, have the fear of God and be virtuous? That was what Abraham was asking. Shall a child be born to a man who is 100 years old? And shall Sarah, who is 90 years old, be a child? And Abraham said to God, Oh, that Ishmael may live before you. There are some prayers that we are praying out of fear. After Abraham had killed the th he said, I can't have faith for a child at 99. I can't have faith for a child when my wife is 90 years old. Are you saying to yourself, can I, I can't have faith for a good husband at 40. Anybody that comes, I will just manage like that. Whose report will you believe? And Abraham said to God, oh, that Ishmael may live before you. God, I brought this choice. Yes, I'm still trying to get him born again. But at least he, has, he said he loves me. I'm still trying to stop him from smoking. But God, can this Mr. Kunle, Mr. Festus, Mr. Peter, whatever his name is, can Moshud live before you? Can you just sanction this choice? Can I just get married so that it would be on record that I also got married? Can this also live before you? Can this choice that I made in hero, can this choice that I'm making in frustration, can this choice that I'm making out of fear, can this choice live before you, God? Then God said, no. And what God is saying to, to that tonight is No. Your choice of fear is not what I want. I want you to have the product of faith. Then God said, no, Sarah, your wife shall bear you a son. You will connect to your covenant child. You will connect to your covenant. You will not go to an abalist to have a child. You will not go to the river to have a child. You are going to have your own child in your own marriage. And that man will not sleep with you in your matrimonial bed to have a child. Your own husband in that your marriage will impregnate you. And you will have a child of your own from your own marriage. No, Sarah, your wife shall bear you a son. And you shall call his name Isaac. And God now went for that. I said, let me clarify it to you. This is not just a figment of, of your imagination. I'm not saying it to make you feel good. This is what I have proposed to do. He said, I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his descendant after him. No. All those funny thoughts in your mind and in your head, God is saying, no, that's not my will for you. There is a perfect will of God. I'm not going to allow you walk in my permissible will. I, I, there's a perfect will of God for your life. There is an expectation of heaven concerning you. There is where God is taking you to. There is a settlement. There's an establishment that God is bringing your way. Whose report will you believe? I believe it's a good time for us to start praying. Can you lift up your fears before God and say, Lord, I turn down my fears. I let go of my fears. The Bible says that we should come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. Some of us need to come boldly right now to the throne of grace and obtain mercy. Lord, have mercy on me for these wrong thoughts. Lord, have mercy on me for this thought of fear, thought of ungodliness, thought of unrighteousness that have consumed my heart. Lord, I ask for mercy for the thoughts that I've allowed the devil to bring to my heart and I've allowed it to take root. Lord, I ask for mercy. Can we go ahead and ask for mercy? Lord, have mercy on me. I come boldly to the throne of grace that I may obtain mercy and find grace. I need grace to believe you.
I need grace to believe what you are working in my life. I know you are working all things together for my good. The grace to wait. The grace not to be discouraged. The grace not to give up. The grace not to laugh in, in, in fear and be consumed by fear. The grace to verbalize my faith and downplay my fear. I release, I, Lord, I ask that you release to me in the name of Jesus. The grace to speak by by faith, the grace to declare boldly what you are saying concerning me. I receive in the name of Jesus. All the marriages at the brink of breaking up because of the fruit of the womb. The women that are ag that are agonizing, that are in pain, that are written in pain. Several IVF failed. Several miscarriages. Several months of, 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 your, of your menstruation just flowing and not stopping. Several months of disappointment. I bring the word of God to you and I declare in the name of Jesus. The Lord says no. You are having your own child. Your whole room is opened. The Lord is visiting you today. Right where you are in your room. As you are listening to this voice of the Lord through your hairpiece, the Lord is visiting you and the Lord is opening your womb and the Lord is giving you your Samuel, the Lord is giving you your Isaac, the Lord is giving you your own child in your own marriage in the name of Jesus. Melata neni ala brasan dele keshe le vragalo se le belenteve. Rose efle bandele kia sata ala rabokondi. Everyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb, I declare it is your season. It is your season of fruitfulness. Exceeding fruitfulness is coming your way. I see multiple birds, twins and triplets. Ramekon sheleveliasa. The Lord is redeeming the time for you. The Lord is redeeming the time. To, for you. The Lord is collapsing times and season in your favor. As you ride on the strain of faith with the Holy Ghost. Every doctor prescription, every doctor's verdict over your life, the Lord is overturning. He is overturning. As you believe the report of the Lord, the Lord is making all grace abound unto you. So that you have sufficiency. The spam count is sufficient. Your ovulation is normal. Your ovaries and your eggs are fat out. They are delivering. Your uterus is holding your baby. In the name of Jesus. That fine blood is turning into a fine baby. In the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit overwhelms you right where you are. The Spirit of the Most High overshadows you. In the name of Jesus, the word of the Lord. I see someone, you are carrying treasures. You are carrying treasures. God, uh, you, there's been a prophecy hanging over your life that you are going to have your child. I see the Lord causing it to come to pass. Prophecy fulfilled. In the name of Jesus, I declare prophecy fulfilled over your destiny. Prophecy fulfilled over your life in the name of Jesus. I am mean, I'm seeing someone, they said you are having a stillbirth. That child is not going to hire. That's not going to be a stillbirth. That is not going to be a stillbirth. The Lord brings that child, that child comes alive. In the name of Jesus, as this word is going forth, the baby in your belly leaps with joy. In the name of Jesus, no stillbirth. I see the Lord overturning result. Medical histories, medical reports is cancelled in the name of Jesus. 
Le rosef le machine de leka. Melo sentele miso televrahashia. There's a couple you are lifting up. Yarane kusiata. You have been lifting up the doctor's report to the Lord. Yarase telia. And the issue is with the man. The issue is with the man. And the Lord is saying that he's overturning that report. He is overturning that report in the name of Jesus. That result is overturned. Is overturned. Is overturned in the name of Jesus. Rana sutele vrebo shiela kayad. Mele suntele gila bo shala rabayasi. Nele riato sieta. I hear creative surgery. Creative surgery. There's a missing part. There's a missing part. And the Lord is saying creative surgery. Believe him. Believe the report of the Lord. Let that creative surgery start right now in the name of Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit. Have your way. Have your way. Have your way. In the name of Jesus. In that life, have your way. Let Jesus be glorified. Jesus is glorified in your life. Right where you are. In the name of Jesus. There's an elderly couple you're asking. Can it be us? Can we also partake? I want you to key into the testimony of Sarah and Abraham. The Lord is visiting you. The Lord is visiting you. Ela rada basata, ela rada basata. Oni a yole o mako. Le rosi tala be adali ko shi na blina ke asata. An elderly couple. God is saying that there's a, a, a sound of rejoicing will be heard in your tabernacle. In the name of Jesus. And the Lord is saying to singles, I see marriages, I see marriages, I see men and women in their covenant relationships. And I declare in the name of Jesus for everyone trusting the Lord, everyone believing God for their own spouse, for their own husband, for their own wife. I declare in the name of Jesus that the Lord brings you into that relationship. The Lord brings you into that relationship. The Lord brings you to that covenant relationship. I declare kingdom marriages from this marriage summit. They emerge in the name of Jesus. Jesus. I declare settlement. I, I hear somebody you are crying, Lord, settle me. The Lord said, I'm settling you now. I'm settling you now. I'm settling you now. I'm settling you now. Believe it. I'm settling you now, says the Lord. I'm settling you now. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Somebody, you had a dream and you were getting married in your dream. The Lord said, I should tell you that dream is coming to pass. That dream is coming to pass. It's coming to pass. It's coming to pass. You did not see the highs of the man, but you had the dream that you were getting married. I declare in the mighty name of Jesus that the word becomes flesh and it dwells in your life. The word becomes flesh in your life. In the name of Jesus, the Lord brings, them, brings you to that man and quickly the Lord brings an alignment. In the name of Jesus. Rabbi Eseteleria Dabo Shita. I see somebody that's uh, and contending, contending with your marital destiny. Le Rosef Lamina no Shele Frabai Adabasa. Lift up your head, O ye gates, and be ye lifted out here, the everlasting doors, that the King of Glory may come in. Every and resisting your marriage, resisting your marital destiny. I declare by the mercies of the Lord, by the power in the name of Jesus, this and goes wither in the name of Jesus. That and goes wither in the name of Name of Jesus. La rose fleme gele mani ataya da 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 basa. Hindele kraba ya rose ataya. I see somebody. There's a line that have been that have, that have been created. I say you can't cross this line. It becomes a hurdle. It becomes a hurdle. Many people in your family have not been able to cross. I see the Lord taking you over that line. In the name of Jesus, every limitation you are jumping, the Lord is taking you over every limitation. Ha, Rabbi, that verse that is very strong. The Lord is bringing you over that limitation in the name of Jesus. And you have been praying that once you go through, that the Lord should remove the line. And the Lord saying is responding to that prayer. As He's taking you over the line, the Lord is removing that line. He's bringing ease into your family. Everything that's been either to be difficult in your family the lord is bringing ease in the name of jesus i see a family you want to serve god you want to press into the things of god you want to serve god in your marriage and there's a limitation of finances the lord said he's opening the doors of of wealth he's opening the doors of wealth he's opening the doors of wealth and you have an assignment. God is saying you have an assignment. And that your assignment is to bring other marriages 
into the realization of why you have brought them together. That's the assignment God is giving you. So as God is giving you these testimonies, is reminding you of that assignment. Don't be carried away. You must fulfill that assignment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. All the glory must be to the Lord. For he is worthy of our praise. No man on earth should give glory to himself. All the glory must be to the Lord. I see an elderly woman. You are praying for the marital destiny of your children. The Lord is saying to you that as you are declaring, I, he wants you to declare. He said you will speak and it will come to pass. He said as you declare over them, he said he is bringing an amen upon it. Is bringing amen upon it. Is bringing amen upon it. So right now, wherever you are, start declaring. Concerning their marital destiny, start declaring. What do you desire the Lord to do? What do you desire to see? La Roche Flamena Niana Masa. All the glory must be to the Lord. Reliable. Reliable God. You are reliable God. Reliable. Reliable God. You are dependable, God. Dependable, dependable, God. You are dependable, God. Oh, dependable, dependable, God. The Lord said, I shall announce a new season upon your life. I announce a new season. I announce a new dimension of grace. Mm -hmm. If you are trusting God for something in your family, in your marriage, whatever it is, can you say to the Lord? Can you declare it? Lord, I trust you for this in my marriage. I trust you for this experience. I trust you for this dimension. Can you go ahead and speak to the Lord? Speak to the Lord. Maximize the grace of God that is available right here, right now. Can you declare what you want to see, what you want to experience? You want joy. You want bliss. You want success. You want the Lord to propel you forward. You want your husband to rise, to become significant, to, to, to stand with the elders at the gate. You want your wife to become virtuous, to become strong. You want her to be to, to have, you know, the Bible says, and Isaac prayed for his wife and God opened her womb. And if you're praying for your wife, go ahead and do that. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Barahatu celebrebado shea. Mela ro se clahashu lebrebahasiata. Mela no se teleriata kine beleno sieto. En nane nano shala rapa kinte pleno sieta. Le honde fla bushe lebrahania katuselia. Rebele fento kulusit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah. I believe that you have been blessed. If you have come on board the train of faith, I believe you will share your testimony soonest in the name of Jesus. So I want to encourage you, don't lose heart. Don't lose faith. Keep your confession alive. You know why God changed the name of Abraham and Sarai? Because there was a need for their confession. So your name, when they call you your name, Abraham, father of nations, it's a confession, it's a declaration. Sarah, mother of nations, it's a declaration. So God had already projected into their lives a declaration and an experience that will pro propel them into their destiny. So I want you to know that God has also given you a new name because your experience from today will be as a result of the new name. So you call yourself, I'm blessed, I'm fruitful. Are you trusting God? I said, I'm fruitful. I'm fruitful. I'm a fruitful woman. I'm a blessed man. So I want you to start declaring. So start making that declaration. That is who you are. When somebody asks you, well, I'm a blessed woman. I'm a blessed man. I'm a fruitful woman. Start making those declarations. And I pray that will be your experience. That will be your testimony in the name of Jesus. Till we come your way again tomorrow on day 19 of Marriage Summit. Please, I want you to continue on the train of faith, trusting God, believing in his report. God bless you.